Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be replacing the valve stem seals on the D16Y8. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because when I first dropped the motor in, I didn't replace the valve stem seals. And since last year, I've noticed a little bit of oil consumption in the engine. Um, I'm thinking it's the valve stem seals. I do understand that when I engage in VTEC, it will consume a little bit of oil, but it's too significant for me to justify that it's just because of VTEC. So today we're going to replace the valve stem seals. I'll show you guys the process. All right, guys, so we're going to be removing the valve cover uh, because everything that we're going to be working on is under here. So I'm going to start by marking off my distributor just in case I move it later. I don't think I'll have to, but just in case. There you go. That will show me how to basically put it back to where it was supposed to be. Um, now we're just going to remove everything. We're gonna adjust it to TVC. So we want this to be up arrow. That way um, it'll be TVC for cylinder one and cylinder four. Um, that's when we will start filling the area with some compressed air. So I'm just gonna adjust this right now. We also wanna remove all the spark plugs. All right, now that we're at TDC, we're gonna be using one of these uh, a hose from a compression tester. And make sure you remove the inside valve. This is how you're gonna fill air into the cylinder through the spark plug hole. So all you're gonna use is one of these uh, um, valve stem removal tools and just twist it out. And then with that set up, um, what I had to do is basically attach a hose to here because this bit won't connect to my air compressor. So this holds it and seals it tight. Um, basically the same way that I did my uh, leak down test. So we're going to start with cylinder one. So before we remove like the whole valve train and all that, uh, basically I'm going to twist this on first. There we go, should be sealed on there. And then since that's done, we're gonna remove the whole valve train. Of course, we also have to remove this bolt here because this is holding down the rest of the, the rocker assembly. So we have to remove it in a specific order as well. Basically the opposite of how you torque it down. So basically one, two, three, four, and then, you know, you go from there. So one thing to keep in mind when you're removing this whole rocker assembly, leave the bolt in there when you pull the whole thing off. The reason being is it actually holds it all in place. If you don't have it in there, it's, good. it's gonna be a mess and everything kind of falls apart essentially.
off just like that. So the tool we're going to be using is basically one of these to cup over and and remove the valve uh, keepers and stuff. And of course, you're going to need a magnet. Just going to make sure that this actually fits over one of these things. Because it's sometimes a little bit too big and wide. This is a little bit wide. So I'm going to modify this tool a little bit so that it works. All right, before we even get started, let's plug up any areas with some paper towel so that we ensure that if the keepers fall into the engine, it doesn't get lost inside the engine. Um, there should be some oil holes around. You're just gonna look and mainly cover up any of the holes that there, there are. So uh, I'm just gonna get some paper towel and a light and we're gonna start plugging things up. All right, so it looks like there's a hole here. There's a hole here. Another hole up here. So anywhere where there's a hole, we should plug up, as well as the spark plugs. All right guys, so I did have to modify my tool to get it to fit here. It had a lot of trouble fitting into this, um, these springs. So I grinded the crap out of it and uh, modified this area to fit. Um, so it is fitting now. Uh, now we're going to basically introduce some air into the system at 30 PSI and then we could start replacing some of the seals. Keepers out with the magnet, and then we can just pull it off like that. Spring comes off. We'll leave it connected because we're just gonna quickly go and do this. There we go. Takes a little bit of effort, but we got it out. Wipe up any leftover seal. All right, next we're gonna basically get some oil from anywhere and grease up this area, the, the valve. And then we're going to put the new seal on. All right, with the new seal, here it is. Um, just put it, put it on a 10 millimeter deep socket. And then slowly, wait, slowly work it down before you put it on the 10 millimeter deep, deep socket. So that's capped in there. Now, you just push it in. You'll feel a click in. And then we'll get a rubber mallet and just tap it a little bit. Just give it a couple light taps. And that's in. So that's a seal in there. We tapped it in place. Now we just put the spring and the keepers back. All right, I managed to get um, this keeper in there. Uh, it was actually a pain in the ass to get in. I, I don't know if there's any other trick to it. The tool just doesn't allow any space for me to kind of slip it in there. So I'm going to finish up the other three valves here. Then we're going to, we're going to work on number four cylinder. After that, we're going to rotate uh, the crank until it's TDC for cylinder two and three. And then we'll replace the center section. That should then be it. So we'll get back to it once we get to cylinder four. All right, so I found a, figured out a better way to do this. is because I had this rotated the uh, other way. So it's blocking all four sides. I can't really put the keepers in. Now I've actually bent this inside piece a little bit more tighter so that I'm able to um, you know, use my finger to put the keepers in. So this way it makes it a little bit easier to reinstall because before it was a pain not being able to, to reach the keepers. And now I'm able to kind of push it in place. Whoa, not fully. There we 
go. And then hold it up and release. So the last one is put back in. Now I'm going to put the valve train back in and then we're gonna adjust the valves. All right guys, so it's the next day. Um, so I decided to check the timing today. I didn't wanna do it last night because I didn't wanna be waking my neighbors by warming up the vehicle to operating temperature because I'll need to rev it in order to do that, at least get it you know, there quicker. Um, but the timing is all good. It's still set at 16 degrees. Um, so just marking the distributor off and lining it right back up is perfectly fine if you don't have a timing gun. Uh, but I do have a timing gun, so I wanted to just double check my timing. So everything is good. Uh, so that's basically the valve stem seals for the next little while. I'll just basically be monitoring the oil consumption on the engine. Hopefully this reduces the oil consumption. If not, there's not much I could do. I'm just gonna keep topping it up and you know running the engine um, as is because I'm not gonna be pulling apart the whole motor just to do a full rebuild. Um, that's just a little bit too much work and it's not worth my effort at this very moment because I've already spent a lot of money on this motor and you know I might as well get the most out of it before I have to like you know, do a full rebuild or anything like that. But that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope this helps you guys out. And if you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.